The DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is becoming a really popular live streaming webcam due to its really nice video quality, how easy it is to set up, and the ability to actively track the subject. But there are a few settings that you're gonna wanna get right to make sure you're getting the most out of this camera for your live streams or your video calls. And I may have found an issue that has me questioning its reliability as a live stream camera that you're gonna wanna be aware of. Getting the Pocket 3 set up is pretty easy. First thing you're gonna notice is that on the bottom of the camera is actually where the USB-C cable is, which is great, except for how are you supposed to put it in position when you're connected to the bottom of the camera. And that's where these grips that come with the camera are really helpful because once you connect, whether it's the battery extended grip or the regular kind of extension grip to it, the USB-C cable is in the back, which is gonna make a lot more sense to set the camera up to be used as a webcam. And next, going on how easy this is, you're gonna take a USB-C cable. The one that came with the camera is gonna work just fine. I just have this Apple one that also does the same thing. We're just gonna connect that to our computer, turn the camera on, and then it's gonna recognize that it has a USB-C cable and you can select either file transfer or to be used, in this case, as a webcam. And then we're just gonna recognize the camera on our platform. It's gonna kick over and we're good to go. The platform I'm using here is Riverside, who I've partnered with on this video. More on them in just a minute. So now that we have it connected to our computer, let's talk about some of the best settings in the Pocket 3 to make your videos look really good. For frame rate and resolution, the DJI Pocket 3 is gonna give us 1080p live streaming recording, and we can do that in either 30 frames a second or in 60 frames a second. 30p is gonna be the best for most scenarios. If you don't know which one you should use between 30 and 60, you should probably just go with 30. And next for exposure, we have two settings. We have either auto or manual. And when you're in this auto setting, you can bring the EV compensation. If you don't, maybe your image is too dark, you wanna make it a bit brighter. You can just play with that and it's gonna make the image a little bit brighter if you bring it up or if it's maybe too bright, you can bring that down and just kind of dial things in the way that you see fit. I typically keep that right at zero. And then for manual, look, you know who you are and if you wanna use manual, feel free to dial those settings in. But for most of us, I think for a live streaming camera, keeping it in auto is fast and it looks really good. And then when it comes to focus, the DJI Pocket 3 gives us three options. First is single, which you're probably gonna wanna avoid. Next is gonna be continuous, which is where most of us are gonna be in, meaning the camera is continuously trying to focus on the subject. And the next one is product showcase, which if you're doing anything where you need to hold a product, up in front of your face and have the camera toggle back and forth between just your face or emphasizing the focus on the product. That can be a cool feature to have set in. The next setting is gonna be sharpness. I typically bring this down to negative two. I think it has the best look when it's at zero. I think it looks a little bit too digital. You can also adjust the noise reduction in camera, which look, this is noise and it can make your image just look maybe less professional and a bit distracting. So the less noise we have, the better. Play with this for your scene. I like to keep it at zero or negative two, but you might wanna bring it up to plus two if you don't have a lot of light in your scene, typically your noise is going to show up when the scene isn't very well lit. So if you don't have a ton of light, you might want to bring that noise reduction to plus two. You can also simultaneously record on the camera to the SD card while it's being used as a live streaming webcam. And to do that, you simply just record like normal on the camera and now you've enabled that. So now that we've got it set up, and we've looked at some of the best settings to use to get the best video quality possible. We're gonna to wanna to take a look if there are any overheating issues with the camera that would just stop recording. What's the best way to get really good audio? And one more little trick that I have that's gonna give you a lot of flexibility of your frame. And yeah, we still have to look at that little reliability issue. But I'm curious, why are you looking to use the DJI Pocket 3 for live productions? streaming, webcam, let me know down below. For me, I do a lot of one-to-one -one coaching calls with all of you who wanna get better with your camera and have some questions answered fast. And I broadcast and record those on Riverside who I've partnered with for today's video. There's a few reasons why I love using Riverside. The first one is that the custom branding is actually pretty cool. You can custom brand 
the font that the lower third shows up, the color, the background image. And I think that provides a really unique customer experience. And when the recorded call is done, I can just take separate files for everything. I can get a separate audio and video file from my feed and a separate audio and video feed from the other person on the call, which is helpful if I want to bring those into post-production and edit them like regular video tracks. Riverside also provides an insane amount of really cool features for live streaming. It's does 1080p resolution multi-stream, which means you can stream it out to a bunch of different platforms at the exact same time. Also has OmniChat, so you can have all your chat in one place that's pulling from those different platforms that you might be streaming to simultaneously. It has a transcription editor for faster editing. It's a text-based editor and Magic Clips, which yes, means it's going to edit it for you. It's going to take that entire, whatever your recorded file is, change that into a vertical video with captions that you can be using for social media or whatever else you need a vertical video for. And you guys know I've got your back and Riverside is hooking all of you up. By using the special link below, you can try Riverside out for free. And when you decide to upgrade, which I'd recommend so you can get access to like the custom branding and some of those other features, make sure you use this code to save 15%. I'll put that code down below as well so you can get your, your copy and paste on. I did an overheating test with the DJI Pocket 3 because when you're using a camera like this for your live streams as a webcam, it's usually for a longer duration, but if the camera's overheating and turning off, that kind of defeats the whole purpose. I let the camera go for as long as possible in a 72 degree Fahrenheit room with all the settings turned on that we looked at earlier. And I also was simultaneously recording to the SD card in the camera which while recording internally and using it as a webcam, is usually pretty demanding on a camera. And that is typically where you'll see the overheating stuff be an issue. Look, the testing conditions were solid and here's what's important. The camera didn't overheat. I ran it to 90 minutes, so just over an hour and a half and I got bored and shut the test down. And based on my experiences with this camera and some research that I've done, I don't see any overheating issues while using this as a webcam for your live streams, especially if you're in a controlled environment, outdoors, direct sunlight, really warm weather, maybe that might be a different scenario, but I don't know how many of us are doing that anyways. But I did run into an issue, and this is the one that's making me question this camera's reliability. Using my M1, which will be important, my M1 MacBook Pro, this camera kept turning off between 20 and 30 minutes. It didn't shut down, it didn't overheat. It was almost like the computer just stopped recognizing it and it would just turn off the feed. But that was when I had my computer plugged in to like charging the computer at the same time as doing all of this. When I unplugged my computer, I was able to get the camera to go for that whole test of 90 minutes. After a little bit of research, I have found that with the, specifically with the M1 MacBook Pros, and this camera, that's a common thing that's happening where it's being turned off, not recognized between 20 and 30 minutes, which is really disappointing. It's the only computer that I ran this test on and seeing how popular this camera is for live streaming, it's probably an issue that's isolated to this M1 MacBook Pro, but just be aware of that because it's certainly a deal breaker for me. And in terms of audio, the on camera, the DJI Pocket 3 has its own microphones on the camera, which let's switch over to those right now. Those do work when you're using it as a webcam. So if you don't have, maybe your computer mics aren't great, the mics on the camera do work. And if you have a DJI Mic 2, which we're listening to that audio right now, it does work for live streams. So this is nice combined with the active track where I don't, I don't have far to go in this studio, but if I did have a far ways to go, the ability to have active track moving around while having perfect audio the whole time, it's a pretty nice feature and certainly one that I think is a main reason why this camera is becoming so popular for live streaming. Wouldn't it be nice if someone just simplified all of this camera stuff for you? I've got your back. Tap that subscribe button down below and let's make it easy. One thing that'll make 
having like some flexibility of your frame really easy is with the creator combo you get this like little tripod here which is cool for like a desktop i did find it wasn't like quite high enough to be over the top of my macbook pro and for that reason i think getting something like a desktop tripod can be really helpful to give you a little bit of extra height out of the camera and also be able to get you a little more flexibility on your frame. You could also go all in and just get a regular tripod. It's gonna give you the most flexibility if you need a little bit more space to get that camera almost anywhere you need it to get the frame that you want. And a note on that, if you happen to get a tripod where your camera is gonna be like far away from your computer, you're gonna need a longer USB-C cable. I'll link the one that I use down below to be able to give me like six feet of room on a, on a USB-C cable to get that flexibility. This little DJI Pocket 3 has recently become one of my favorite cameras to use. And it's even become my favorite vlog camera and beat out my previous kind of powerhouse vlog setup from the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. If you'd like to see why that is slash kind of just a review of the Pocket 3 in general, you want to check out this video where I dive into all of that. And don't forget to check out Riverside and use my code to save 15%. All of that again is down below. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. See you.